On a crisp October morning in Oregon, we find four woodworkers carrying six quarter boards of walnut into the shop of one Jason Hibbs. A shuffleboard table is what they desire to build. However, they only have five days to complete the task. Jason, Keith, Sean and Nick deliberate for a few moments before Keith, the obscenely tall, tiny-nippled adult male, decides the boards are too large for the jointer. Thus, the track saw is employed to straight line rip each board. With a straight reference, the men take each board to the table saw to cut each piece that would eventually become the playing field of their shuffleboard table. Selecting the grain for the playing field requires careful arrangement and even more discussion. But before the decision had been made, Keith decided it was time to wax the planer beds, spouting off that it looked as if they had never been waxed. Unfazed by Keith's condemnation, Jason first takes a skill saw and then a reciprocating saw to trim the playing surface to rough length. Meanwhile, Keith continues to clean and mutter under his breath about Jason's lack of shop maintenance. After some musical entertainment, the men find some nourishment in the form of tiny donuts, and then continue their pursuit of building a shuffleboard table. Planing the playing surface boards was next on their list, and, though he won't admit it, Jason enjoyed the freshly waxed beds of his planer. The next morning, we find that only three of the four woodworkers have returned to the shop. The fourth, Sean, was eaten by a female python during the night. Such a shame. Gluing up the playing surface is the first task of the day, and Jason, with his compelling words, talks Nick and Keith out of using dominoes for alignment. The amount of clamps being used is a clear indication that these woodworkers chose the more difficult path. Leg design was next on the docket. With a quick sketch, Keith and Nick leave Jason to get the legs into the computer. With Jason tied up doing nerdy design things, Nick and Keith decided using dominoes would be the easier course of action for the second half of the playing surface. This glue up goes much smoother and requires much less clamping than before. We can only hope that Jason has learned a valuable lesson with Keith and Nick's clamping success. The two halves of the playing surfaces are now dry and Jason exerts his manliness by curling the boards while Keith is scraping the riser blocks. Wisely, Dominoes were again used to join the two playing surfaces together to make the final width.
With the playing surface held securely in clamps and the glue drying, Keith and Jason moved to cutting the boards for the outer table frame. Using the table saw, miter saw, jointer, planer, dado stack on the table saw, and back to the miter saw for the 45 degree miters, the outer cabinet boards were ready to be glued but not before the woodworkers cut down the 10-foot sheet of plywood that would become the bottom of the outer table frame. Dominoes are used again in the mitered corners of the outer frame. And Keith and Nick leave Jason to sand the inside sections of the boards before dry fitting. The dry fit goes as planned. However, the glue-up is a frantic and chaotic frenzy of clamps, curse words, and future heart medication prescriptions, causing the three woodworkers to grab as many clamps as possible and place them anywhere and everywhere to try and close the gaps before the glue set. Fortunately, after a long night of disco dancing and a tall stack of flapjacks at the local IHOP, they did learn from their mistakes, and the second mitre glue-up goes together gracefully the next morning, thanks to clamping calls on each corner. Moving on to the legs, Jason uses the Shaper Origin, with a quarter-inch upcut bit from Bits and Bits, the sponsor of this video. Bits and Bits is one of the leaders in the manufacturing and supplier of wood CNC router bits, high performance end mills, engraving cutters, and many other rotary cutting tools for industrial and medical applications. Bits and Bits coat their bits with their own Astra coating, which is their proprietary nano coating formulated to lower heat built up by friction and abrasion as the tool is cutting. Astra coating can extend the life of the bit two to three times, while allowing for faster feed rates. Go to bitsbits.com for all your bit needs and use coupon code MORSELS15 to save 15%. Jason decides he needs a break from the shop, leaving Nick and Keith the arduous task of laying out the legs in the remaining walnut boards. After much deliberation and Keith's incessant pickiness on grain orientation, the placements are marked and rough cut. Jason returns from his morning paper route to plane the leg blanks for a glue-ready surface. Jason moves on to the bandsaw to roughly shape each leg, allowing Nick and Keith to glue each leg blank. Teamwork at its finest. Well, perhaps at its mildest. With the plywood fitting into the outer table frame, the three focus their attention on the playing surface. running both sides through the planer and then flushing the ends with a track saw. Jason, yet again, is alone on the sander as Keith and Nick watch nearby, enjoying their favourite big league chew and reminiscing about their days playing single A ball in Missouri as college dropouts.
Again, the origin is brought out to carve a design in the middle of the playing surface, as Keith is seen playing on the lathe, trying to hide his boy-sized nipples from the camera. With the center carved, the three woodworkers shift their focus to the numbers and lines for the ends of the playing surface. They each take a turn with origin, and all three fall madly in love with the machine. It speaks to them. It suddenly gives their lives meaning. Total Boat is the epoxy of choice for this project, and with the white pigment, the three woodworkers all agree it was the right choice, as they race to fill the voids before calling it a night. The next morning, with the epoxy dry, the woodworkers run the playing surface through the planer, making sure to take only light passes to avoid potential tear-out. Despite the age of this machine, Jason has never rotated the knives for a fresh cutting edge and lives on the edge of danger each and every day. But this is a badge of honor he proudly wears. Once again, Keith condemns Jason's foolhardiness and vows to rotate the cutters when Jason makes one of his many trips to the bathroom. Jason moves on to the legs, laying out domino placement and then gluing them together. After an hour or more has passed, the legs come out of the clamps to be rooted, first with a top-mounted bearing pattern bit, followed by a bottom-mounted bearing flush trim bit, both of which are from Bits and Bits. Please check the links in the description below. The legs are then cut to size and a healthy roundover applied to the edges. Dominoes are used once again for the leg stretchers and with them glued and clamped, the three woodworkers move on to hand sanding. Rubio Monocoat Pure, a hard wax oil, is then carefully and sensually applied to all surfaces to enhance the beautiful color of the walnut. The next morning, Nick saddles up on the Origin to cut custom puck tops out of both the dark heartwood of the walnut and some contrasting light sapwood. Jason and Keith fit the olive canvas to the plywood bottom, which then allows them to place it in the rabette of the outer table frame. After placing the playing surface into its final resting position, with a few screws from below, Jason and Keith carefully turn the outer cabinet upside down so the legs can be attached. Jason begins drilling for the hanger bolts and Nick and Keith finish gluing the custom walnut tops to the metal pucks.
Having the hardware installed, all that was left to attach the legs was to slide the quarter-inch plates over the bolts, tighten the lock nuts, and carefully turn the newly made shuffleboard table upright again. The woodworkers have done it! A solid walnut shuffleboard table in just five days.